Okay, what we're going to be covering here is we, we've got a cast for cash game. It's one of our video, our upright. Anybody have any of our, seen our slot games besides our Monopoly? Okay, that's our model 360. Um, we're going to cover pretty much the operation of the game, how it works, what happens when you first power it up. Any way to turn that volume down? Okay, that's a good point there, Randy. Now, there you go. Say, how do we turn the volume down on a WMS game, Ron? Okay, that's one thing that you cannot adjust is the door alarm volume. Oh, really? The engineers wrote that into the software program. So whenever you power up the game or open the door, you're going to have that, that noise, that alarm, and that's not adjustable. You can't adjust it, unfortunately. <laughs> I believe there were some gaming uh, regula I think there regulators you have to have that required a certain volume level yes. in some jurisdictions. And that's a regulatory thing. Okay. Now, if you notice, I handed out some packets and some workbooks. So, we're going to also have some group activities as well where we can get in little groups and go over some of the different um, parts of the game. Okay. Um, in your you open up your customer technical training program book on the first page there's a little letter here that I put out um, it has different manuals that are available to you from our different gaming devices from our video upright from our slant and from our slot uh, Ithaca thermal ticket printer manual anybody needs to work on those um, the most everybody should have these little handbooks. They come with the games when we do the install. You'll find that you'll get this plastic packet in the hopper or in the game. And most everybody have one of these? <coughs> Video game handbook? No? Then you need to, to see your um, slot technical manager and ask him for one because every game that we deliver out in the field will have one in it. That, reset keys, etc. Okay, we also have the Ithaca Model 750 Ticket Printer Manual. Here's the one that most everybody would be interested in, is the Upright Video Gaming Device Manual. Um, so you should have one here at the Viejas Casino, I believe. I think we gave Lee a copy of this about six months ago. Anybody in, never seen this manual before? Okay, everybody's familiar with that? Good. And if you do want a, a manual for your own use, or if you need extras for the shop, just call our parts department, area code 702-257-7020. And the part number is listed here. All you have to do is ask for the part number, and they'd be glad to ship one out to you. And there, there is a small fee for that, of course. <laughs> Nothing is for free anymore. OK. Now, the basic operation of our game, first place that we start is the power supply. We call it a PDU. And that's called a power distribution unit. Out of the power distribution unit, we distribute the plus five volts, the negative five volts, and the plus 12 volts, and the negative 12. Okay. The negative 12 actually is taken from the positive 12 from the PDU and is converted to a negative on the I.O. board, video I.O. board. Really? Yeah. There's a DC to DC converter on the board? Yeah, it uses, well, actually it has its own regulator. Seven, how can you turn positive into negative? Well, it, it switches it from, really? yeah, changes the zero oh, cross. Oh, I see that. Okay. Well, let, let me pass around a uh, power supply here, part of the power supply. If you open up your PDU, let's get a shot of the PDU unit right here. But you can't see it from there. It's, it's way back behind. Yeah, it's way back. Down, no, it's kind of in, in, right. inside there. Okay. And you'll see two receptacles with the service outlets. Yeah, let me get down there. Okay. Let's see if we can get that in here for everybody to see. Slightly untangle myself. 
We're going for a ride, everybody. There. As you can see it right there. Caution, voltage, <laughs> anti-static. Okay, we have the receptacles. Can you get that down here? Service outlets here. Don't plug anything over um, four amps into those plugs, because you will blow the internal fuse. In the PDU, underneath, well, here's a good one here. You can see what might happen to it. You can actually yeah, right, almost see a fire. Oh, God, look at that. That's a good and what, example. And what, happened, and what happened there? Okay, that's when the 12 volt regulator fried. There was a short in the bill validator. Most of the peripherals use 12 volts plus 12 volts to operate on. The bill validator. The coin, the coin in area, the comparator, the diverter assembly. And also the sound amplifier, which uses the positive 12 volts for the positive audio signal. And the negative 12 volts is used for the negative peak of the audio amplifier. And that's the only area where negative 12 is used on our game. Negative audio amplifier? Well, it's not an audio amp, it's a preamp. What it does, when the audio signal comes in, it's in a sine wave. So you have plus 12, zero, negative 12. Uh, okay. so, so you have peak to peak. Well. Okay. Right. And when, now like say if you have a game and you have a distorted sound, it's possible that your negative 12 volts is out on the game. And a good way to, to indicate that, see these LEDs on your I.O. board down here? Yep. As you can see right here. You have your plus 5, your plus 12, your negative 12, your plus 5 isolated, and your 18 volt at the bottom. Okay, if any one of these LEDs is out, then you most likely have a problem with your power supply unit, power distribution unit, PDU. Now, what I've seen happen most of the time is like the 5 volt or the 12 volt are the most common that will burn up on this thing. And that's because you'll have a short in either your hopper, your bill validator, your coin in area. The most common, if you can get a shot at the door here. And mostly on our slant top models, we see this a lot. Okay, right. Sometimes you'll find coins laying right here between the comparator and on top of the optics. And what they'll do is they'll short, one will get down here and short some of the, uh, the red wire, which is a 12 volt, and the black is your ground. And the, let's see, there's your um, inhibit and your coin data signal. Now that goes from your comparator through your optics and on back to your back plane. Now, if you get a short on your 12 volts to ground, it'll definitely take out the LED on the I.O. board. It, it'll indicate it there, but it'll take out your 12 volt regulator on your power supply. Rather than blowing a fuse, it blows apart. Correct. Ooh. Sometimes. <laughs> now, let's see if I brought one with me. This, this is called our tri-voltage power supply, tri-unit. Puts out the 12 volt, plus five and negative five. And the negative 12, which is generated down the line, as I said on the I.O. board, for the audio preamp. Now, let's see if Frank gave me one here. Okay, I don't have an internal part of the other PDU, but the, what this connects to is a uh, PC board, has about five filter caps on it. I don't know if you've ever looked inside of one of the PDUs and seen those big black round capacitors. Okay, those are filter caps. And those are pretty much for the five volt and the 12 volt. The voltage that comes in goes to the 12 volts. From there, it is cut down through the primary to the secondary. To is broke down into 12 and 5 volts and then regulated from there and then sent out distributed through the game through the PDU and then onto the back plane which is this board and you probably would know it as the motherboard. That really 
really is a misnomer, though, isn't it? Like Ken, Ken said yesterday, I mean, when we think of motherboards and computers, we're thinking about something with a bunch of chips on it. But this mm -hmm. is really just a backplane. There's no active parts on that at all, are there? There, there is. There is square on that. No, yes, no. there is one. Oh, there is. Okay. okay. See, see that part right there? That's your E-square. And that holds your secure memory. It's, e square stands for E E P R O M E prom double E prom, and it's electronically erasable, programmable, read-only memory. And this chip here holds all the, of your secure memory features, and that's very important. Gaming requires that we have it on this backplane. Reason being, if you had a jackpot on this game, and you're a technician and a dishonest one, let's say, which we know everybody here is not. Everybody here is, is all honest, we know that. But there are some dishonest ones out there. And, well, you know how you were talking about yesterday how a lot of gaming regulators are very, you know, untrustworthy or a little sketchy about their employees. They're, they're always watching them. So they, they made a requirement that the C square be put on the back plane so we cannot swap CPU boards from one game to another. If you were to hit a jackpot on this particular game on the floor and you were to take that CPU board out, put it into another game after the jackpot ticket has been written and then try and say, okay, here's another jackpot over here. You got your Aunt Martha on this game and then your Uncle Joe over here and you're setting up jackpots for him. Well, that can be done without the C-square. But with the E-square, if you were to take that board that had the jackpot on it and plug it into the other game, it's going to come up with a tilt called backplane mismatch. And we, we have what's called a hot dog tilt. And it, it kind of looks like a hot dog, actually. Whenever you open a door or close a door, or it changes from a test, see this big, uh, well, it's kind of hard wait, to. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. Let me, uh, <laughs> OK. Hey, very good. Oh, that's your hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, notice how it looks like a hot dog? They call that a hot dog tilt. And, well, you know, these games are made in Chicago, of course, the foot long hot dog. You know. <laughs> so that's, that's the reason they call it a hot dog tilt. This is where all of your tilt comes up. They'll, they'll flash like that. That there shows tilt logic and main door are both open. Now, I can't close the logic door unless I pull the switch out and then cheat it that way, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave the logic door off and the door open for now. Um, yeah, And the hot dog tilt, as I was saying earlier, when you change out your CPU board, you will have that backplane mismatch. It will say tilt, backplane mismatch on your hot dog tilt. So that's our secure EEPROM right here. Everybody knows what a regular EEPROM is, right? Kind of, sort of. We have a mixed group here. Some folks are pretty advanced technicians. Some okay. are not as advanced. No okay. Problem. Okay, the power supply. Now, on the PDU power supply, the tri output supply, the 5 volt, negative 5, and plus 12, we have another unit that looks a lot like this one. If you were to change this part out, in your PDU, if it was bad, burned up like this one, then you want to make sure you grab the right one. Because we have this other one here, which looks almost exactly similar, except one is a single output. It only puts out plus 12 volts. Are the connectors different, or how can we tell the difference? OK, the only way you can really tell the difference, there's a labels on the heat sinks. Come on down, Ron. Okay, you get it to where I can see it and everybody else Come can. Here. Here. Can't zoom in? Well, look in here. Okay. Just hold it as close as you want. Okay, on that heat sink. Anybody see that? I'll show, let's the show one on the left yeah. side. Okay, let's say here, here's this one. Okay. Okay, so there's the label. There's the plus 12. Okay. At 9 amps. So it's a single output. Right, single output. And this Here is your try output, oh, plus 5, so plus 12, negative 12. So negative 12 is in, let's see, the negative 5. doesn't say anything about minus 5. No, it doesn't, but it is generated there. Can you? No, it doesn't. 
doesn't say not, not on this particular one, but negative five is generated there as well. Okay. But the connectors are identical, aren't they? Connectors look the same. The only okay. problem is the voltage pinout. Oh, geez. Wow. Well, that's a, that's a bit of critical knowledge there, isn't it? Right. So if you were to take a 12-volt uh, single output and plug it into a PDU, you're going to see smoke and flames come out of that oh, thing. It's going to cause a fire. Now, the 12-volt single output is used in our liquid crystal display in the top unit of the Cash for Cash. Or at Saboba, you have our slot game. And anybody that has some of our real Monopoly games, you have what's called a dotmation unit, and that's in the top. And it uses a 12-volt single output supply as well. Doesn't the dotmation um, uh, display also use, like, plus or minus 100 or something? Is it all low voltage? It's all 12 volts. Okay. It's not, it's well, it has high voltage for the deflection of the uh, dot mation. It's a plasma display, right? It's not LEDs. Oh, this one here? The dot mation. No, we, we have a special dot mation, and they're mercury filled dots yeah. in, in the display part of it. Doesn't that take I wish I had one here. Minus 100 or something to operate that? Or am I wrong about no, it? It uses high voltage to operate it, okay. but it's more or less controlled by 12 volts. Okay as far as the deflection, X and Y. Okay, let's get back to the basics here. Now we covered the basic power supply, the tri-volt power supply output coming out of the PDU. Power this down. Okay, from there, the voltage will go into the back plane, which I called up and showed you a picture of. Here is our CPU board. Okay. Here is an XU2 EEPROM here. This EEPROM holds the video graphics portion of the program. There's XU3. That is the game EEPROM. That holds the operating system data of the game. And it pretty much controls the, has all the theme information in it as well. So if you open up your book, open up um, your folder here. Okay, the first page, Notice on the left side, I have some service bulletins. The first one is the amperage requirement. It shows the amperage and the voltages that are required for the game. You should each, let's see, the, four, the 4DS game, which is our slot, and the 550, which is this unit right here, use approximately four amps at 120 volts AC. Now our 550, with the top box, we use about 7 amps because we have another 3 amps being used up in the liquid crystal display LCD. And our same goes with our slant top. The Monopolies, everybody's seen our Monopoly games. We have movers and shakers, 